Okay. My friends, we're here with the one and only David Trailer, Senior Managing Director <laughs> at Golden Eagle Partners. Uh, he said his title was Pincushion. I don't yeah. know. I mean, these days, I guess we all are, right? Yeah. Well, that's a, that harkens back to Chevy Chase. I'm David Trailer, and you're not. Yes, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Which yeah. is actually not so great. I don't think being uh, what we've been doing in cannabis for so long, you know, as you know, Patrick, it's not easy. It is not and, easy. And it hasn't gotten easier. Well, listen, for anybody who, who is not aware of Golden Eagle, give us a little flavor yeah. of what you're doing. Uh, yeah, we're uh, the first investment. Well, we got into in cannabis in 2013. Wow. Uh, a long OG. time ago, almost nine years. Uh, we've been doing it internationally for almost seven, which is really cool. It's probably even that more. That long internationally? Yeah, our first wow. Israeli client was in January, February 2016. Uh, and so, yeah, we've talked, uh, we've, we've been in the U.S. doing deals. Just in general, Patrick, we've done over 25 deals in cannabis. We've had over 50 clients. Uh, we're registered with FINRA. Uh, and certainly I did work in biotech before, so that's been a real... Uh, lucky thing for us. Frankly, we're we're very lucky because you know I've been an athlete ambassador for athletes for care. Right. Uh, we're doing a lot of science on that end, and and we're also been doing some things globally. So the the market's always been crazy, and then you add the international piece to it, it gets even crazier. All right. So we have to address the athlete thing. It was lacrosse for you. What's the yeah. sport again? Yes. Okay. So sometimes I like to think that he dunked on LeBron James and like, yeah, you know, yeah. in the yeah, NBA. Yeah, white men can't jump. Yeah, I don't know, dude. You <laughs> might have it in you. But um, but no, from from my perspective, what's always been interesting about our conversations over the years, David, has been the fact that you are helping a lot of companies locally, but that that biotech angle, that medical angle, right? Um, what is it about that side of the industry that appeals to you? Uh, well, that's a good question. We, we got so lucky from the, again, from the beginning, Patrick. And one of the reasons why I got into it when I was in Colorado and doing biotech deals, uh, founded Golden Eagle Partners 2012, right? Timing's everything. That's when right. Colorado and Washington legalized adult use. And then I started looking at it and they started having these small events. And actually one of the first events I went to was in 2013, I think it was CNBC was there. And then you start looking into it, and back then it's like, okay, well, it's highly regulated. It's a biological supply chain. When you get down to it, marijuana is a drug. And I'm like, well, that's biotech. So that's when we really kind of jumped in. And again, you we're just so lucky because if you look at Delta 8, this industry is going more towards molecules all the time. Delta right. 8's Exhibit A, right? Whether you like it or not, a lot of people hate it. I get it. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, but the science is there. The science has to be there. And if yeah. you really look at it, Patrick. You know, going back to the marijuana testing labs, HPLC, which is a lot of these, what these testing labs use to evaluate how clean a product is through all the regulations, that's a biotechnology. Supercritical extraction is a biotechnology. Absolutely. So. All right, so fast forward to where you are now, right? International is a huge focus for you. And it's not something that we talk about often enough, although we're covering LATAM at Benzinga, yeah. we're covering Europe. We want to know what's happening out there, even Africa, right? But, yeah. but give us, Give well, us, give I'm us not, a sense yeah, of, yeah. What, of what you're up to, what you're seeing, man. Well, excuse me, we, you know, we're certainly, uh, the international market's so tough, and you know, that's the thing. If you really want to know what somebody's doing in South Africa or Germany, the best thing to do is talk to people. I mean, you know, we can't know everything about every country, but certainly, you know, we did sponsor events in Berlin and Frankfurt this year, Frankfurt for the second time. Uh, and, and we just got, again, got pretty lucky because we kind of doubled down on the ICBC event. I think we'll do that again next year. Right. But it turns out Along Germany. Along with Benzinga Miami. And Benzinga Miami, there of course. There we go. Yeah, Benzinga Miami. Uh, you know, I have to tell you, that was one of the biggest mistakes we made in 2022. Oh, we had to, keep we it had, on record. We had, on to, record. we had to pick between, you know, we'd never done Trailblazers. We actually did Good support people. you. Good people. We did support yes, you did. during the pandemic. You did, thank you so, for that. Thank yeah. you. So my, but, but, but international yeah. is a really crazy uh, event. You know, we think as Germany goes, maybe Europe is going to go. But then you have this old question too, Patrick, like cultivation, you know, the supply chain. We're having weird things going on with Colorado and California yes. with cultivation, right? Yes. And then you have, you know, Germany having to look to outside Germany to do cultivation, but if you do that, then you're going to go across the UN single convention. And so, you know, Europe doesn't, if you look at Europe, it doesn't have 280, but it's got some other crazy stuff. Yeah, no kidding. So let's talk about Germany for a second. Y you know a lot of these companies, right? Give us a sense of that market, the scale of this market. Give us a sense of some of the leading Ooh. players who you know. You know, uh, Cansativo is yeah. one that, that we both share a connection to. Yeah. But 
Uh, give us some of the others. Well, yeah, so, and, and we, uh, let's say when we know them, and as you know, Patrick, I have always been very careful about how we, we know them, we've only known them for really, uh, Demican for over about a year, but the other one's right. really more recently this year in the last six months. Uh, Moving but, quickly then. But yeah, uh, through our uh, events over in Europe, but yeah, Cantaraj, uh, which we've known for about a year or so, great guys, they're doing some interesting things with importation into uh, Germany. They went public last Friday on the Frankfurt Exchange. Congrats. Yeah, we'll Demican is soon. one of the three first cultivating uh, operators to allow, there's a, was given the ability to cultivate in Germany. The other two are Canadian companies. Yeah. Uh, and then you have uh, Canify, which is another group. We're, so we're doing a German panel tomorrow. They're going on more on the medical side. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to get a hold of Sanity Group. They're one of the big yes, players yes, over yes, there. Yes, yes, uh, yes. We weren't able to get them on a panel. And then Peter Homburg's another big personality. And he's like the main partner for Dentons in Europe. Yep. And he's going to be on our panel tomorrow too. Well, what so. about those North American companies like Cureleaf International and Aurora yeah. and some of these companies that have footprints over there, right? Are you interacting with those folks? Yeah, we, well, we, we connected with 420 Pharma, which did a recent deal with Cureleaf. We talked to the EMAC guys in Antonio, yeah. who was the CEO over there. Uh, he's since left, and I know, I don't know what Cureleaf's really doing there. The interesting thing about this, Patrick, is we talked to a lot of the MSOs and a lot of the investors. And I won't say names, but you know a lot of the, the well-known names, and they're like, you know, there's enough opportunity here in the U.S. that we're not interested in Europe, You're and I get refocusing that. Refocusing here, yeah, yeah. And, or they're yeah, or not even refocusing, just staying focused here. It makes sense, and it makes sense, and you know you can't fault them for that. But the cool thing about that, Patrick, is that we believe we had an advantage having done international for over seven years. You know, we've had clients with operations in South Africa, Thailand, Greece, Colombia. Uh, you know, certainly Israel, a uh, number of countries. But right. looking at uh, Europe, it's hard enough to have operations, you know, as you guys know, in North America make them work, and then you want to add the whole complexity of cross-border. I get the fact that they it's don't. It's crazy. Yeah, it it's is crazy. crazy. It's, it's tough enough, it's hard enough to succeed in this industry, and then it you is. add that complexity. It is. Well, listen, in our last minute together, David, yeah. What, what are you seeing going forward right now? I mean, obviously we're talking about any sort of regulation happening in the lame duck that might give the industry a boost. We're talking about, all right, maybe we're seeing the bottom for where cannabis stocks are. Maybe we're not if the S&P continues to tank <laughs> yeah. during a recession, right? <laughs> Anything can happen. Um, what are your thoughts on, on where well, we're headed here? Uh, I was going to ask you the same thing. Oh, <laughs> I can give you mine, let me tell you. Well, as you know, I've always said there's no crystal ball in cannabis. Bob Hoban would uh, disagree with me on that, but I'm sure. talking more strategically if you're in a company and trying to figure out where things are going. Uh, it's very tough, but I think one thing that we've been saying for the U.S. nationalization or legalization for so long is the fact that whenever it happens or whatever, we think the this industry is so unique. It's so The complexity of it goes across so many government, government agencies. You know, the IRS, the FDA, the DEA, the Treasury, uh, you know, go on and on. And yeah. so if they're going to try to do legis legislation, it's going to be really hard to get it right. And it's our thought is yeah. when everybody thinks that this legalization thing in the U.S. is going to be black and white and somebody's going to write a, you know, write a pen a bill and sign a bill. And it's and, and it's, it's like no, our no, thought is it's like the 2018 Farm Bill is a classic example. We had a client, I've mentioned this before that uh, and that passed right they signed that in 2018 december and we had a client that had or a uh, hemp company that had ordered hemp from kentucky shipping it to colorado through kentucky oklahoma shout out kentucky shout out and oklahoma shout out and the guys in oklahoma they run the truckers ran a red light and this is national news oh, that's january right. 2019 that's and right. they pulled it over the, the cops in Oklahoma thought this is the biggest drug bust we've ever had. Yeah. And these guys are, and the crazy thing is this gives you an idea how crazy cannabis is. So they tested like this big truck and some of it tested hot because they're testing colas that were over 3.3%. Sure. And then the other parts that were lower. And then they're like, well, this is, you know, this is marijuana, this is hot. And it's like, well, no, I mean, you, it's the whole thing. So they didn't get that. Uh, they didn't get the memo. They, well, they didn't get the memo. And they didn't also, the company that was doing the shipment didn't get it for another 18 months. Wow. So the main point is, wow. as that an example, and maybe it's not a good example, is that whenever things roll back, it's not going to be a, it's an easy road, frankly. For sure. Our thought is so, but good to see you. It's good to see you. David Trailer, 
Golden Eagle Partners, it's always a pleasure, brother. Likewise, man. Thanks, bro. All right. Have a great day. You too. All right, y'all. Welcome back to MJ BizCon. Benzinga Cannabis Insider here, hanging out with some cool, cool people. We have Christine Smith, CEO of Groon. I said it correctly, I think. How are yeah. you, Christine? Hi. Good morning. Good nice morning. Nice to meet you. You yeah. too. You too. Yeah. So tell us. Tell us about Groon. What, what What do you do? We make edibles. Delicious, oh, fantastic, great. amazing edibles. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. So, how long How long have you been in the industry? Tell us a little bit about your background. Yeah. So. Um, just like everyone that comes in this industry, we all have our, our, our previous lives. So I was an architect. Um, yeah, for, for architect 16 years. Architect to edible maker. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and uh, got into the, accidentally stepped into this back in 2015. Um, and really, really fell in love with the with the form factor of edibles. And and just kind of kind of started experimenting, started in Oregon. Um, and we've, we've kind of slowly and strategically expanded um, our markets across the United States and into Canada over the last two years. And... Uh, nice. Yeah, so we're, 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 we're just an edible company. We're not vertically integrated. We are not cultivating. We're not doing re retail. We're just really honed into one little niche piece of the market. With, for lack of a better term, perhaps an asset light model in terms of business expansion. Yeah, that's exactly right. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So talk to me a little bit more about your products. I want to get to the market part as well, mm -hmm. but uh, give us a, I mean, some companies are focused on chocolate. Yeah. Some companies are just focused on gummies and just known for their gummies. What what do you focus on? Well, we, we do it all. So we started as chocolate, uh, then we, we pushed into gummies and I, I you know, I like to say that the, the edible market is really a gummy market. So there's <laughs> it really is seventy percent of, of the market are gummies. Um, uh, we uh, really honed that in, and then recently we reduced or released a, a new form factor, which are pips, which are like M&Ms. Oh, so cool. they're candy coated chocolate pieces. So microdosed um, candy coated that. chocolates, which are incredible and really fun, and, uh, and they're called pips. Um, but yeah, so we both our chocolate and our gummies, we offer them as a ten piece, um, and then also as a as a single serve that's dividable, okay, um, and in a different form factor. So we're hitting different price points across there's, all the categories. There's so much commentary around the edible market, right? In terms yeah. of fast acting, mm -hmm. does it actually work? Uh, how are you doing it? That you're doing it the wrong way. Can you talk to me a little bit about how you prioritize? the relationship between the edible and the consumer and what you think that they care about? Yeah, well, that's a that's a really great question. And it's something that's really important to us. Um, and, and that would be the consistency and taste, right? You've got to deliver a consistent product over and over. And it's one of the reasons that the way we've expanded at different markets. So we're, we're actually operators. So we don't license our products and have other people make it in other okay. states. We're actually controlling the product in every single state that we operate in. Okay. And so we're able to deliver the consistency that, that and I that's how we've that. really found. And it's a, nobody is doing it. It's no. really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's a long game. You know, it's, it's a lot easier to just license your product and tell somebody how to do it. But but, Which but is what this, I expected, yeah, to be fair. No, yeah, no, we so in, in markets where we're able to, we acquire our own license if there's a horizontal market. Um, otherwise, we do a reverse licensing model with partners. Um, so we actually come in and control and operate and do our own distribution and sales. I, I, we will have to have a follow-up interview and dive more into this, but mm -hmm. I want to get to the market yeah. part now as well. So talk to me about the markets that you're focused on in your growth. Yeah, so uh, we are really excited about Missouri right now. Mm -hmm. So Of um, course, how can you not be? Yeah. Welcome, to the, welcome to the team. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we're, we're in five states right now in Canada, um, just like Missouri, our, our, our most recent state, and really excited right. about yeah. um, recreational. Uh, we just want to license in New Jersey, so we're really excited about New Jersey. Awesome. Um, and uh, Illinois is hot on our list, too, for, for, for early 2023. Now, you're choosing some pretty hot, limited license market states, yeah. right? Is that the focus? Um, I think we, we're looking at all of, all the states, but yeah, the, the, you know, we're, we are really interested in the markets where we can go in and really strategically have an impact on the market. Um, the, the open markets are more challenging. We're, we're not interested in California. Um, we are in Oklahoma, but that's been a real learning lesson for us. Um, yeah. We do really well in Oregon. That was where we came out of. Arizona has been a fantastic market for us, um, and uh, you know we've we've really made some strategic partnerships with the big MSOs. I was just so, that was my follow up question was yeah. how are you prioritizing the partners in which yeah. who are helping you here? Yeah, so it's it's really maintaining and nurturing those relationships so we can support them yeah. um, in these in these states that they're operating in. Fantastic. So. We really do have to have a follow-up interview. Fascinating <laughs> company, and I love that you have so much input and control in the CPG aspect yeah. of what you're doing. But tell us about Groot. Yeah. Uh, where did the name come from? What is that? Okay, so this is funny. 
So it actually, so I studied architecture mm -hmm. in Denmark. And it right. simply means green. And it was a mistake. The whole thing of this company when I started was honestly just a happy mistake. Um, I didn't mean to, to create it. I created the name and the product and everything kind of as an accident. Um, but really, that's where it came from. It, it Green, it symbolizes the, the plant. It mm -hmm. symbolizes sustainability. It symbolizes a lot of things to me that were really important. Um, and it's and it's and it's nostalgic to something through architecture and design that was meaningful. It actually has yeah. meaning, and yeah, I it love has meaning. that. There's yeah. so many where it's, it's it hard to say. Weave something, <laughs> yeah. leaf something, and it's like yeah. I mean, cool. Like we know what you are. Like yeah. you know, I recognize you now. But like, there's actually a meaning there, and you're tying it back to perhaps maybe something that can come back in and play more to, yeah. to what you're doing in the future. Yeah, I hope so. That's really cool. So anything else that you'd like to? let our audience know about going into 2023. It's gonna, it's been a crazy year. It has been a crazy everybody. year. It's been a crazy year, but you know, I think one of the things I, I would tell everyone too, people with it, I mean, we've seen tremendous growth this year. Um, so despite all the hardships, I think there's a lot of growth potential for, for people still in this company. And we're really, really excited for, for what's Great. to come. Um, so I think I, I just have so much faith in, in the plant and in this industry as a whole. And I think we're going to still see, I think next year is going to be a hard year, but I think there's a lot of opportunities. I love that. I love the realism, honestly, yeah. but the, the excitement as well. Well, thank you, Christine, for sharing it with us. We'll get you back on soon. That I'm excited great. to dive in further into the product side of this with you, yeah. uh, but we'll have to do that next time. Sounds great. Christine Smith, thank you. CEO of Groon. Thanks. Live at MJ BizCon with my pal Howard Schachter, Chief Communications Officer at Merimed. How did you like that intro, by the way? That sounded it, very man. like, should I have added like a, hey, baby, <laughs> like a Dick Vitale thing? You know, I'm think? asked all the time, What's your title? And I uh -huh. can't say chief communications. You can't it's do like it? It's too much. So I go head of, head of comms or something There you like go. That. Head of you comms. Know? Head of comms. It sounds, that's relatable. But the, you know, the C, the C, the C suite title works too. I'm digging that. It's nice, right? Anyway, thank you for having it's me. It's my pleasure, man. Always love seeing you, man. So how long have we known each other? We, we were talking when you were at Acreage. You've been at Merrimed now for a while. You're now in Boston. You just moved up there. Well, the story I like to tell is we were, uh, and, and I know you try to bury this, so we uh -huh. were pilot, co-pilot, back in, back in the days back of war. Back in the day, that's right. Right wing was taken down, we're flying down, and uh, you turn yes. to me and go, You hey, shouldn't have hit that tree. Schachter, we get out of this. I'm going to start myself up a huge cannabis trade business platform. You yes. work at an MSO, we'll figure out. A, I go, if it happens, it happens, and here we are. And here we are. Now it's Saving been, private chapter. <laughs> it's been about uh, five or six years. I started out at the National Association of Cannabis Businesses, oh, NACB, right. right now defunct. But yeah. before that, I was like a Fortune 500 comms guy. Um, and that was my entree into cannabis and then acreage for several years and Mary met a year and a half. And along the way, honestly, you know, I mean, whether this was you talking or not, Benzing has been just an unbelievable platform oh, for amazing. me and our companies along the way. Well, listen, I appreciate you saying that and I'll pay you him for it later. But, but Howard, the thing that I've always known about you, rewind back to acreage, right? In that Super Bowl commercial, right? That almost aired. Rejected, right? but yes. 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 yes, um, yes. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the brownie, Merimed's brownie, right? You right. are really good. <laughs> at, at getting eyeballs, man. Where, um, give us a little color on this. Well, thank you. Um, you know, I like generally being the guy behind the guy, uh -huh. so this is a little awkward for me to talk about. But, um, yeah, look, I've, I have always prided myself on trying to bust through the challenge of how do you get a brand, a company, a person, um, widespread mass coverage. Yeah. Um, in a how way do you that's, go viral? That's basically, right? Exactly. Yeah. How do you go viral? And um, and so yeah, what you're referring to during the acreage days was uh, we produced a spot that we tried to place on CBS. I think this was the 2019 Super Bowl. That's right. Right. Um, and uh, beautifully produced PSA that basically was telling the story. Look, the time is now to get yeah. access, and that you know that rings true today. Obviously, we're closer than we've ever been, but we're still far away. Right. Um, so anyway, we presented the spot, finished, produced to CBS. They said no. We were prepared to write the check, but I come saw on that opportunity, CBS, right? And uh, and man, it hit the sort of the zeitgeist on hey, if if pharma and beer can get on. 
on the game Why Not? Why Not? Why Not Leo Cannabis, right? Yeah. So that was uh, that was a great moment in time, and yeah. then the brownie was a lot of fun last year. Tell, remind us, the brownie. How big was that damn thing? <laughs> so uh, about a year ago, yeah. almost to the day, right? Um, December, we launched a brand of uh, soft baked goods called Bubby's Baked, which right. is flying uh, off the shelves. It's phenomenal. Where we make them available. Yeah. But to bring some attention to you know what could have been otherwise positioned as just another edible brand. Yeah. Um, we created the world's largest pot brownie, 850 pounds, 20,000 pounds. 20,000 gra- uh, milligrams of uh, THC. Wow. Three feet by three feet, and uh, everybody seemed to love it. Saturday Night Live, Jimmy Kimmel, 43 countries, five billion impressions of. Uh, so what happened media. to that thing? <laughs> what happened? Who ate it? Um, well, we're still producer AT. It. Did you get in on that? You know, we we. Uh, Without going through all the sausage making or brownie making, Got as it, it were, we intended to sell the thing for charity. Sure. Um, as it turned out, we couldn't. Regulatory issues. Regulatory sure, nonsense, sure, sure. and it had a it had to kind of get tossed. I understand. Unfortunately. I understand. Unfortunately, but another fun moment in time. Yeah. All right. Well, in the time we've got left, Merimed, where are you guys now? What's the story? I mean, the market headwinds for everyone, sure, sure. right? Uh, obviously, sure. we're all waiting on regulation. Mm-hmm. But um, how are you guys going to market right now? Yeah, so um, I think we've got a pretty compelling story, you know? Um, we're a great balance sheet, unbelievable team that we just keep adding to. Yeah. And um, um, we're going gangbusters. You know, we think that everything begins with brands, our flower and concentrates brand, Nature's Heritage top seller in the markets we're in. Right. Betty Zetti's, our lead fruit shoes um, brand, top seller wherever we make it. So we believe if you've got high quality brands that customers love, a strong balance sheet, a footprint in interesting high growth markets, yeah. you've got a winning formula, you know? Yeah. Um, and so we just, you know, kind of grind it out, head down, um, day by day, measured growth, but with really exciting 23 ahead of us. We're calling that a transformational year. A lot of assets are going to be coming online, new Good. dispensaries, yeah. our brands into new states. So we keep expanding, but doing that in a financially prudent and strategic way. Um, you know, we've got one of the strongest financial stories in the industry. So. We need more exposure, if anything. There you Maybe go. more people need to know that we're out there yeah. and uh, and available for investors or whomever to, you know, strategic relationships, M and A opportunity. So again, thankful for Ben Zinger to always be there with us and for Happy us. Happy to do it. Man. And, um, Happy to do it. And, and you uh, guys, you guys have been some of the OGs in this space, <laughs> right? I mean, and I say that lovingly, right? There are some OGs where we're like, all right, it's time, like, see you later, right? But Bob, John, the team at Merrimed, you guys have been here since the beginning. Well, I give so much credit to Bob, John, um, our COO, Tim Shaw. Tim, These yeah, are, They've geez. been in the industry for over a decade. Yeah. So, you know, this isn't your typical MSO story, you know, and everybody's got their own story and, and God bless. But these guys have, have, have worked in the space nook and cranny for a decade yeah. and applying it in a smart way today. And then layer on to that, a team um, of real pros. We brought on a CFO, Susan Valer, recently. Who's oh, just, she's wonderful. You yeah. met, right, just yeah. fantastic. Um, so we, we've got this balance of, you know, you're tried and true from traditional corporate America to combined with the cannabis experience. And I, and I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, cream rises to the top. So it does. We're, we're enjoying ourselves. We're looking forward to a killer 23 and, um, you know, I can't wait to be here next year and talk about what we're doing. Here's to you, brother. I can't wait to fight in another war with you. (laughs) Yes. Good to see you as always. Thanks so much. Howard Schachter from Merrimed. We'll see you again, my friend. Be well. You too. All right, y'all. We're here with Brad Ragoni here at MJ BizCon. Excited to be here with Benzinga Cannabis Insider. How are you, Brad? I'm doing well, and you? Good, man. Good, good. So this is your first time being on. We've not had Terrapin on before, so do really quick 30-second intro of your company. Um, Super quick intro of the company. We've been around for 12, 13 years in Colorado. We're a multi-state company at this point. Um, Started in Boulder. That's where our headquarters is. Had the first medical license for a dispensary there. Great. Um, And have kind of been, you know, growing ever since. 
Awesome. So you're you're in multi-state though. So where else other than Colorado? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. So medical and then everything that Colorado is. Very different approaches, right? Absolutely. Yep. Uh, anything you can dive into there in terms of how you're building in Pennsylvania to maybe model after what you've done in Colorado? Uh, Pennsylvania is still a medical market, as you said. Um, we are vertically integrated. Um, only in Colorado and Pennsylvania, we are just a wholesaler. We don't have any stores or um, dispensaries. So we're, we're just kind of going with the flow. In PA, we, are, we have 100% penetration in that market. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yep, which is unheard of. People love the brand of both Terrapin and Double Bear, which is our concentrate line. Um, so we've been we've been doing great in Pennsylvania for the past five years. What what's the restrictions in Pennsylvania? Can you enlighten us a little bit? Because you know there's MSOs there, mm -hmm. uh, but they don't have a ton of real estate, right? So, yep. um, what's it like having operations in Pennsylvania? Is it a large scale? It, it is indeed. The the big thing with Pennsylvania is everything has to be approved by the Department of Health. Okay. Uh, which first and foremost, we say we are in the business of compliance. That comes first. So we have a wonderful relationship with the DOH. Uh, we do everything right. correctly, yeah. um, as everyone should. And as we know in the cannabis space, there are people who do things above and beyond. There are people who do things. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about what you're focused on here. MJ Biz, what, what exactly so is Terrapin looking to we get We are at, at MJ BizCon to introduce ACE, which is an automated cannabis experience. Um, most people who walk by our booth will look at it and see a vending machine. Mm -hmm. uh, we are correcting that language and we are calling it a digital kiosk because it is much more than a vending machine. Okay. Um, the machine is about 2,000 pounds. It holds 1,152 units. It's eight rows of eight, so you can have 64 SKUs in it. Uh, it has a 42-inch monitor. It's a touchscreen. It has a window so you can see the packaging inside. That window can be... This is all your tech? Completely covered. We've been working with a company out of Canada called BMC for okay. three years. Great. Um, this has been in development for three years, so we're very excited to launch it here. Um, just the people who have been setting up the last couple of days, the attention that we've already gotten has been outstanding. Fantastic. So, so you're looking for other retailers to start maybe Absolutely. taking this from you. Absolutely, and the intent with this machine is it's it's very efficient. Yeah. Uh, this is not for someone who needs an education or a first time buyer. This is okay. for somebody who says, every week I wanna buy a quarter, I wanna buy you know three cartridges, whatever. They can order online, they can walk up to this digital kiosk, scan a QR code, and be gone just like that, okay. which in turn is allowing those customers who need um, an education or more of a hands-on approach, more time at the counter. Okay. So. Uh, Interesting. Yeah. So That's we are, very cool. we are trying to be efficient for those people who know what they want. What types of products can you have in there? Is it just pre rolls? Is it concentrates? Pretty much everything. Okay. Yep. So um, we will have our first machine in one of our locations in Colorado sometime this year. Okay. Uh, before the end of the year, and we will have flower carts, batteries, um, and when I say flower, eighth quarters, and and this is adaptable. So you could absolutely put edibles in it. You could put. Can you talk to me a little bit about the business model here, right? Because mm -hmm. it would seem, you know, that you would be focused on products, consumable products, right? Yep. For for consumers, but this is a very different side of the business, which some could be saying this is diversifying what you do. It's mm -hmm. keeping you more resilient to any market waves like we have seen, like no other industry yep. in cannabis. So talk to me a little bit about the growth that this presents to you. So with us selling this machine to other dispensaries and other companies, the idea here is, you know, we're just coming out of COVID. There are a lot of people who don't want to have the face-to-face -face interaction anymore. They would prefer to not do that. So we're providing an option for that customer, um, as well as for the dispensary itself, a lot of marketing opportunity. There are screen that you can advertise on the screen. The entire machine is a wrap, which can be done to your brand, to my, you know, anyone's brand. Um, on each side of the machine, there are slides, so there's a, you know advertising there as well. And then again, I mean, it's really, I can't stress enough, it's it's an experience. It is not a vending machine. Like when you see it, you are excited, you want to touch buttons. Yeah. Um, it's fun. Now, this is an unfair comparison, but I, I you love those soda machines at the movie theaters, right? Mm -hmm. Where you can pick which soda you want, mm -hmm. mix it with it. Uh, it just creates that experience. But again, it's way more intense than that. But it's just the first thing that popped into my mind. Yeah, absolutely. Something like that, or yeah. if you're at the airport and you see the, the Best Buy, you know, the big fancy yeah, very digital cool. kiosks. Yeah, the ones uh, that'll take all of your money. Yeah, yeah correct. <laughs> correct. You're a little bit different uh, yeah, in that sense. Absolutely. This machine does have, uh, it's fully compliant, so it does check your ID. Um, our intention is that you. It lives on the sales floor of the bud room, whatever your dispensary is calling it. Mm -hmm. So by the time you get to the machine, you've already had your ID checked, but the ID does have, I'm sorry, the kiosk does have an ID 
reader on it. Mm -hmm. So there's two points of identification. As items are dispensed from the machine, they drop into um, an exit bag. That exit bag is sealed, and on the exit bag, as it's being um, you know, removed from the, the digital kiosk, it is time stamped, date stamped. So we are covering, again, like I said, we first and foremost are in the business of compliance. Right. So we are covering 100% of compliance with this machine as well. Fantastic. So going yep. into 2023, sorry. Yep, no, go ahead. I was saying going into 2023, what's your focus? Is it focused more on expanding your, your cannabis business? Is it going to be dually focused? in terms of expanding this white, not white label, but this machine. Mm -hmm. uh, what is Terrapin going to be pushing in the next they're, year? They're separate entities. So um, ACE obviously is, is new and exciting and we will be absolutely pushing that, but we're in the business of cannabis. Right. So, you know, we're going to continue grinding in Pennsylvania and Colorado. And, uh, we may have some more stores. We may not. You know, there are certain <laughs> things I can't quite tell you. Well, but yeah, we currently yeah. have six stores in Colorado. Maybe that becomes seven. Maybe it becomes eight. Okay. Only, only time will tell. Yeah, time will tell. You yep. didn't hear it here first. Yeah. <laughs> Brad, anything else that we should know about going to next year? Maybe? If you are at MJ BizCon, come check us out yeah. and AceKiosk.com. Awesome. Yep. Give it a give it a look. It's a really cool uh, new exciting cannabis experience. Fantastic. Brad Ragoni, COO of Terrapin, and I'm guessing Ace Ventures as well, separate you, entities. So. You got it, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Ace Kiosk. Ace Kiosk, not yeah. Ventures. Everything's Ventures nowadays. Yeah. Uh, all right, thanks so much, y'all. Thank you, Brad. Thank you.